All right, so here we're going to look at error bounds for the midpoint rule. I'll have three different examples. Each one of them will have their own video. Uh, yeah, on here I've got uh, the trapezoidal and midpoint. They're similar. So suppose the second derivative, the absolute value of second derivative, is less than or equal to k when x is between a and b. And if the error of the midpoint rule, E sub m, this right here is for the trapezoidal, okay, so basically if E sub t and E sub n or m are the errors in the trapezoidal and midpoint rules, we're just looking at the midpoint, then the absolute value of E sub m is less than or equal to k times b minus a cubed over 24 n squared. You can see they're pretty much the same. We got 12 here, 24 here. So they're going to be similar. So <clears throat> let's look at the example. All right, so let's take a look at example one. It says, how large should we take n in order to guarantee that the midpoint rule approximation for the integral 1 over x from 1 to 2 is accurate to within point zero zero one. All right, so well we've got to find k. So let's let's write down. We've got absolute value e sub m is less than or equal to k times b minus a cubed over twenty four n squared, and we've got to figure out what k is. Okay, see we know a and b. That's the limits on the integral and then we're actually solving for n okay and we want we need to know what does n need to be in order for this to be less than or equal to point zero zero one all right so if you remember we need to find the second derivative because remember remember the absolute value of f double prime of x is less than or equal to k. That's what we've got to find. We've got to find this k value. And in these problems, I'll say this, the the k value, that's sometimes that's the that's the hardest thing to find. All right, so let's let's go ahead and take a look. So I've got f of x is equal to 1 over x. All right. And I need the second derivative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as x to the negative 1, just easier to take the derivative. So I've got f prime of x is equal to, well, the negative 1 comes down, x subtract 1, and then I've got f double prime of x, well, negative 2 times negative 1, that's 2, whoop, that's 2x subtract 1, negative 3, and that, sorry about that. And that equals 2 over x cubed. All right. So there's my second derivative. So we know, well, we can find k now. And what we know is we know that x is between 1 and 2. So I've got absolute value f double prime of x is equal to absolute value 2 over x cubed. And what do we know that this is less than or equal to? This one, this one's one of the easier ones to find, okay? Because we're, we're, we're only interested in x values that are between 1 and 2. Well, look at this. If I plug 1 in, I get what? 2. Now think about this. The further I go to the right, okay, and the closer I get to 2, what's happening? Well, I'm, the further I get away from 1, the larger the x values are that I'm plugging in. And I'm cubing them, so what's happening to the denominator as I go to 2? Well, the denominator's getting bigger and bigger, so that makes the whole fraction get uh, smaller and smaller. So I know the, the largest that this can be is what? 2. Because if I plug 1 in, that gives me 2. If I plug anything else in, 
that's in this interval besides one, this whole fraction is just getting smaller and smaller. So I can say that this, that this is going to be less than or equal to two. So k is equal to two. And now we just plug everything into here. So I've got k is two times, now remember b minus a, so that's two minus one and that's cubed over 24 n squared. See, I just plugged everything into this thing here. And I need that to be less than or equal to 0 0.001. So 0 0.001. And now we just solve for n. All right, so that's this is 1 here. That's 1 cubed is 1. So 2 times 1, that's 2 over 24 times 0 0.001 less than or equal to n squared. Okay, so I just move this down to the denominator and the n squared gets moved over here. All right. So now what we have is we have uh, 1 over 12 n squared I'm sorry, 1 over 12 times 0 0.001 is less than or equal to n squared. And so I get n squared is greater than or equal, I'm sorry, not n squared, I get n is greater than or equal to the square root of 1 over 12 times 0 0.001. All right. And so that means n is greater than or equal to, and then I punch this into my calculator, 9.1. And so that means I would need to take n to be 10. And that would be my answer. And I hope that helped. Uh, check out my, all my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.